Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Welcome to AutoLine Daily and TGIF, everybody. We've got some cool cars to take a look at, some important personnel changes, and I guess what we just call plain old news. Well, here's something unexpected. According to data from the U.S. Commerce Department, the auto industry is the largest export sector in the U.S. economy. It's bigger than the energy sector, which includes oil and coal products, and bigger than all aerospace exports, including passenger jets. U.S. autos generated $133 billion in exports last year, up more than $17 billion, or 14%, over 2011. That helped lower the U.S. trade deficit in goods and services. And while that deficit is still too high, as a percentage of GDP, it fell to 3.4%, and that's down from 3.7%. You know, maybe it's happened before in the last 30 years, but I cannot ever remember the trade deficit going down. Daimler made some interesting personnel changes yesterday. It gave CEO Dieter Zecha a three-year renewal of his contract, but that got all the analysts buzzing because German automakers typically provide five-year renewals. The board also made two execs swap positions. Andreas Rentschler, who had been running Daimler's truck operations, will now head up Mercedes-Benz cars, and Wolfgang Bernhard, who had cars, will now run trucks. Keep an eye on Wolfgang. He's considered the best bet to succeed Dieter as CEO. They both spent time together running Chrysler in the Daimler Chrysler days. And a number of Americans may remember that Rentschler spent time in the U.S. He was the first plant manager at the Mercedes plant in Alabama. Hyundai is upgrading the Sonata Hybrid for 2013, which is a good thing because the first version did not really deliver the kind of real-world fuel economy that you expect from a hybrid. The upgrade features better fuel economy thanks to a more powerful lithium polymer battery pack, a higher output electric motor, and other improvements to the hybrid system. The base model gets an EPA-estimated fuel economy of 38 mpgs, two better than before, and the new limited model gets a combined 37 miles per gallon. Despite making all these improvements, Hyundai is chopping the price by $200. It starts at just over $26,000, while the top of the line limited model starts at just over thirty-one dollars Yesterday, Volkswagen officially announced the launch of the most fuel-efficient production vehicle ever made. It's called the XL1 and has a European combined fuel rating of 261 miles per gallon. Yeah, I said it right, 261. Now, we all know that the European test cycle generates fuel economy numbers that no one matches in the real world, but the XL1 will still post impressive numbers. It's a two-seat plug-in that uses an 800cc two-cylinder diesel combined with a 27-horsepower electric motor that's mated to a seven-speed automatic. The featherweight XL1 only weighs 1,750 pounds, thanks to a lot of carbon fiber and aluminum, and it has a super slick CD of only 0.19. We here at AutoLine love the way it looks, but we understand how others may be put off by it. VW says it's only gonna build a thousand a year because it's essentially a hand-built car, and that's got us wondering, what the heck is this thing going to cost? Toyota's updating the interior of the Camry just a year into production. This includes soft touch materials on the door panels for the LE and SE models. The blind spot monitor adds a rear cross traffic alert system and the display audio screen is now standard on base models. When the seventh generation Camry debuted last year, it was met with criticism over its choices of interior materials. So I guess this is Toyota's answers to those critics. 
Coming up next, former GM CEO Ed Whitaker talks about the mess he found when he got to General Motors. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. My guest on AutoLine this week is former CEO of GM, Ed Whitaker, who's just come out with a book called American Turnaround. Also joining me on this show are my colleagues Joe White from the Wall Street Journal and Bill Vlasic from the New York Times. Here's a clip from the show. And what surprised you the most when you first got at General Motors and you started looking at their management style and their structure and how the company had um, evolved to the point of going to bankruptcy and being bailed out by the government? Uh, the first thing that I heard when I got there, Bill, was we did nothing wrong. I asked people, senior managers, what happened here? What was the deal? Uh, almost to a person, I got the answer, we did, we did nothing wrong, the economy got us. Which then begs the question of, well, why didn't it get Ford? Why didn't it get the other car companies? So I was amazed that there was no recognition that what had happened to this company. You know, they just ran out of cash. So there was no understanding of what had really happened. We did nothing wrong. The economy got us. You know, the thing, the thing I've watched GM for a long time, and even now, I mean, certainly the good news is they've recovered. They're making money. Um, they have, uh, I like the term they call and they have for it now, the fortress balance sheet. They've got almost $40 billion in cash. I mean, and that's all stuff that had not happened for years and years and years. But if you look at the fourth quarter numbers, uh, you know, Ford in North America earned $1.9 billion. GM in North America earned one4 And this is not a new contrast, that Ford is smaller and yet they earn more money. And I just wonder whether when you were there or you know, when you look at it today, whether that isn't something that, that concerned you and concerns you still, that GM somehow doesn't seem to earn and produce the results that it should given its, its scale and the scope of its product line. You know, I haven't looked at those numbers, so I don't know sort of when you're gone, you're gone. But our concern at GM was making any money to start. And so to go from zero or losing to 1.4, you know, is nothing to sneeze at. I don't know your numbers. I don't know why I can't talk to that in any depth. But 1.4 billion is not a bad number. I can't answer the rest of your question. I don't know. And it wasn't something that you looked at at the time? The comparisons to we Ford. were trying to get on the positive side of profit, not negative side. I mean, we were making zero. We were losing. You know, I'm kind of puzzled by Ed Whitaker. He claims not to know GM's latest financial numbers, but later in the program, he shows that he is very aware of Fiat's current problems in Europe. And I cannot believe that anybody at GM is comfortable with the fact that Ford's making more money, even though it sells fewer cars. And I'm still troubled that in the middle of GM's turnaround, Whitaker just quit and walked away. He addresses that in the show, but you'll have to watch and judge for yourself. And of course, you can watch it at our website, Autoline.tv, right now, or check your local television listings because Autoline This Week is carried on many public television stations across the United States and Canada. Anyway, that wraps up another week's worth of reports. Thanks for making us a part of your day, and please join us again here on Monday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.